Hi, y'all. This is Kristen Chenoweth. Hi, I'm Gloria Stefan. This is Sarah Bareilles. Hi, I'm Patty Lapone. This is Lynn Manuel Miranda. You're listening to the Broadway Podcast Network. There's a cat over here. There's a cat, There's a cat over there. And the wrong one died. And the wrong one died. Welcome to The Wrong Cat Died, the podcast breakdown of the catastrophe. I'm your host, Mike Abrams, and today we have another amazing guest. Right now, you can find her at the Broadway Theater in The Great Gatsby, but before that, she was Cassandra on the U.S. National Tour 6 before the pandemic. So welcome, Mariah Reeves, and thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm excited because I know we we talked uh, and hoped to do this during Funny Girl, but I'm actually am more excited to do this with The Great Gatsby because there's... a a really fun parallel with a couple of the characters that I'm excited for us to get into. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's do it. I always love to start history of cats. So what was your first introduction? Were you a dancer who saw the 1998 movie and loved it? Did you see it live? Like, where was your first viewing? Yeah, so I am a little bit different than the typical dancer who has um, an association with cats. Um, so I I grew up dancing my whole entire life and uh, like started at the age of three. And it wasn't until, unfortunately, this is like embarrassing to say, but and it wasn't until I got my audition for the wow. tour that I then bought the the movie on, what is that, Broadway HD? <laughs> yeah. And um, it wasn't until then that I was watching it every single night of my audition days um so i watched it about i think i watched it twice when before i went into my initial call for the audition and then i had it on my tv every single night whenever i got a call back to just like manifest uh that i would book it because i was just out of college and um so yeah that was like my intro to cats i love that you saw it so you just saw it for the first time as an adult what was your first reaction to seeing it, knowing that you're going to go like, did you watch it more to I'm going to go audition or did you watch it with like a I'm going to be entertained? This is a story viewing. Yeah. The first time I watched it to do like a study of which cat I thought I could embody the mm -hmm. most um, since I really had no prior introduction to it. Um, and so I then was like, OK, let me just see which cat I feel like resonates with me the best. And that's what I'm going to embody in the audition. But then every night after that, when I watched it, I was trying to find different things, new nuances. Um, and it was it was by the end of it, I was watching it for entertainment. Because yeah. I was like, this is actually a really fun show to watch. And the dancing in it is incredible. The choreography, like the way these people made their choices and all of that. It was just it was a really cool experience and I wish I had seen it earlier because it could have influenced my dancing as like a young child and like introduced me to musical theater sooner um, because I wasn't introduced into musical theater until I got to New York and was here for college. So, wow. yeah. Okay. So when you were watching that first time, who was the character that you felt you embodied most? Believe it or not, it was Cassandra. Okay. And that is who I initially went in with that mindset for my audition. Mm -hmm. um, just because I loved how sophisticated she was, how she allowed like nothing to really bother her, but she was still so fierce. Um, and I was like, that seems exactly the type of cat that I can, I could be. Um, but then, of course, Mungo Jerry and Rumble Teaser were my next favorite just because yeah. they're just fun cassandra was definitely the cat that i i thought i could embody the most that is that makes it great right like i think that's part of the beauty of the show is there's a lot of the personalities and when they match it seems like that happens like more often than not which is like that is that is me as a as a human i can embody that cat um, and it's occasionally you find that it's like, no, this person is acting and performing, which y'all are capable of doing too. Right. Um, but it seems like cats skews a lot more to where they naturally cast people who are in that, like who would be that person or be that cat. Right. Yeah. And that's what everybody kept telling me once they saw it. They were like, I couldn't really tell if you were being you or if you were being this character, which 
I didn't understand at first because I was like, I'm just doing the movement and I'm a cat. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually, like once I really settled into the character, she and I very much aligned with um, how we moved, how we interacted with the other cat. It was all it was all one, really. So that's that is so fun. OK, so you get the you get the role. You're going on tour. It's after the the Broadway run ends and it is going on tour. It's the first kind of national tour, I think, of of Andy's uh choreography and production and it's right around when the movie the other movie was coming out mm -hmm. so what was that vibe like on that tour i've heard from some other people but it was quite a time for cats like it hadn't been back on uh around the country in a long time like what was that experience like in the beginning yeah so i'm not actually going to go back a, a, a beat okay and say that i auditioned for the broadway run like when they were looking for a cassandra mm -hmm. replacement but i couldn't make it to the final callback because i was home in north carolina this was like two years prior to me re-auditioning for um the tour and i did not remember that i auditioned for it because it was like a quick like hey can you come in for this and i couldn't make it to the final callback because i was home in north carolina there was this huge like east coast uh storm so all flights were canceled. There was no way for me to get into the final callback. I was devastated. I was like, this is what my Broadway debut was going to be. I was going to be a cat. Wow. Um, and I was so devastated that I was just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I, that there's no flight. There are no train there. Like if I were to drive through a storm, I'd have to leave like right at that moment to <laughs> make it to the callback. Um, and uh, I was I was devastated. I was like, I'm never going to ever be able to do this show since they then announced they're closing um, a couple a couple months later. Um, but then I when I first went on tour with it, it was such a wild experience because our cast was so close and we all like got that initial like introduction to cats together um, of literally crawling on the floor being yeah. a cat. <laughs> um, it was like. It was so great. But then we were in Toronto um, when the Cats movie came out. It was during Christmas time. And yeah. the our production people got us tickets to go see it on Christmas Day. Now, a lot of our company like went away or like they were able to fly home. I was not able to do that um, just because I it, it was too much to try and figure out with like two days off. Um, and so we all went to the theater or to the movies to watch it. And it was, it was a one of a kind experience, yeah. <laughs> um, as most people I think would, uh, would say that the movie is, we were all a little shocked yeah. about, um, the certain elements of it, the CGI, um, how they try to make a story of it but that only enhanced us then on stage because we were like no this is we are real humans you can really see what we're doing how we're interacting with each other our story of if you could say that cats has a story mm -hmm. of like what we're doing every night um and so it was it was a fun experience for all to like for us all to kind of bond together yeah um but it was definitely a an interesting experience to go see the cats movie on Christmas in Toronto with the cast. We were at one, I think the only people in the theater, there may have been one or two other people who were not associated with us, but they left like halfway through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's such a, everyone's experience sounds pretty similar for that movie. I mean, I, it, yours is obviously different with such, you know, close ties to the material at the time. I went to a preview like the before it was even open and done, I went to one of the press previews. It was like two or three days after like the first like real big preview one. So it was a full crowd, but it was everybody invited. So you kind of expected uh, at least I thought it was like friends and family and then a few press people. Like I thought it would be a crowd that would be really into it and like knowledgeable of what was happening. And everyone was laughing like it, at part at parts that should not have been funny. 
Right. People were laughing. And then I've heard the reverse from all my friends that like went to see it in theaters like around the country. It was your experience. It's like I was by myself or there were three other people here spread out in these big theaters. It was such an interesting movie. I, we don't have to go into details of that because I but the part I'm really fascinated about more so is that stuff like this, sh my podcast became because of that movie. Mm. And there was a lot of like extra emphasis on the the show, like the knowledge about it. Like people knew it's been around for 40 years at that point. Mm -hmm. But there was this whole new wave of like, ooh, I haven't seen Cats in a while or I went to see it on Broadway or I saw it as a tour in the 80s. Right. So did it change kind of the audience dynamic after that movie came out? Did you notice kind of a shift of who was there or was it still the traditional? These are the theater people that know Cats and wanted to be there. Yeah, typically with our audiences, we had the diehard cats yeah. uh, fan. Um, it didn't really. Uh, some people at the like at the stage door would be like, "So, what did you think of the movie?" So they just wanted to like know our thoughts. I don't think it necessarily swayed their energy towards our production of the yeah. show. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sure PR gave you exactly the the statement to say to, to that question, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, so I want to hear just my favorite part is hearing a little bit about fun stories from the tour. What was like super memorable for you? So what are those moments and the stuff that you that you will never forget? Yeah, so I have a couple, but um, one was that I was able to bring my dog. Um, wow, I was able the to whole time? The whole time. And Amazing. he started out on tour when he was about, I want to say like eight months old, seven months old. Um, and he was like our tour pup at one time we had like 10 dogs on the tour. Um, but Leo was there from the beginning. The whole cast loved him. I was able to, um, at certain theaters, bring him into the dressing rooms so that on two show days, I didn't have to worry about like trying to go back to the hotel to let him out to then like get back to the theater in time. Um, so I have a lot of fun memories with my dog on tour. He has seen most of the country than more humans have, I yeah. think. Um, just because like the way we would, I would schedule out my day. It was like when we would get there on that Monday, I would immediately find food. And then the Tuesday before like our, um, our sound check and all of that, I would take him on long walks in each city mainly to find the theater and find the stage door and where I needed to go, but then also just like have that chance to explore. And it was really cool because most people would like sleep in or like kind of just relax before sound check. But that was one of like my all time favorite things um, yeah. was being able to experience that with my dog. Rules have changed now since since then. So if I were to go on another tour, he would not be able to come with me because he is a pit mix as well. So like most airlines don't allow pit bulls which that's a whole other story for a whole other day um <laughs> but um yeah so i was able to experience that with him another thing is that i um reconnected with my current boyfriend on that tour um okay. so we had known each other for since we were like 12 prior to just in the dance world he's a tap dancer um and he was living in austin texas at the time and when our tour went through Texas, he sent me a message and was like, hey, do you want to get lunch? And I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, um, free food. I can't ever turn down free yeah. food. Um, and uh, we just like re like we hit it off, which was kind of great. Two weeks after that, he drove to Oklahoma City to come see the show again and um we've now been together for five years so wow um that was uh, he like came to toronto for my birthday he basically followed the tour around um and he's great so that's one of the sweet memories that i have from tour um even though he wasn't on the tour with me he basically was he came to so many different cities like i remember he came to chicago and he went to atlanta um, he came to my final show in Baltimore. So it was it was a really sweet and fun, fun experience to have with him. Um, and now to the good stuff. Let's see. I remember entering after the one of the quick changes and the person who was doing my change forgot to put on my tail. Um, so it's the quick change after the Mistopheles magic light up. 
Yeah. Um, and there was a moment where I then had to run into wing one, take everything off and like whatever. And the wardrobe person picked up all of my stuff and started walking away. And I like slowly creeped on the stage and I said, I don't have a tail. So I had to like slowly creep back off to find my tail, to put my tail on because, you know, Cassandra has no fur. So yeah. it was just like, what? I, I don't know what's going on. Other fun memories I have. Um, let's see. There was an, a time that the um, Mistopheles magic light up of Cassandra um, happened not to me. So like I was getting Mistopheles' light cue. Yeah. But Mistopheles, it was it was so it was so strange and everybody was laughing on stage. Um but like that whole lighting thing just didn't work. And then I realized I ran off stage and then my lights were still going. And it was supposed to be on this it was it was just like a weird cueing that um they messed up which was really funny um yeah i've met some of the greatest humans that i'm still friends with to this day mm -hmm. one of them actually came and saw gatsby last night and we uh we were able to like rekindle what we what we had um because we were so close like the initial uh cast we we just all hit it off so well even the, when we had replacements and things like that um but yeah that's awesome okay, yeah i got a couple i got a couple quick follow-up questions here okay so one is i love that you all brought dogs on the show on the tour were there any cats no there were no cats it all, was dogs. all dogs all dogs on, on the cat's, cats tour i okay that's so fun i mean dogs probably travel a little bit better anyways um and i love that you were allowed to do that because it just doesn't seem like something that's it makes the accommodation so much harder like you think about mm -hmm. trying to find hotels that are dog friendly like it's already difficult to plan that tour, I'm sure, for that many people around the country. To add in that variable is is logistically challenging, but makes it so much fun because it feels probably more like like home to have yeah. have your animal with you. Um, when you talked about your boyfriend, I really thought you were going to say he was in the show. So I want to ask, which cat do you think he would be? He will be. He would be. I think in his spirit, he is a Skimble Shanks. Okay. He is so i don't i don't know now actually let's see no i think he's a skimble shanks for sure just because of how he everything is so put together but also not i love yeah. asking this question because i've met a few i've done some episodes with like husbands and wives and or partners just in general and i'm fascinated by would your cats be together? Like, you know, like if they were both in the show, should those two be like, is it that like, are you inviting the personality or is it just like, yeah, off stage, you two have a really great chemistry. And it's most of the time it's like, yeah, I was Bomb Ballerina and I was Tugger or I was, you know, it's like, that makes a ton of sense. But every once in a while I get one where I'm like, those two, I don't think it on stage would be together. Yeah. And that's kind of fun. So I'm, I was curious if, if it's, if you found Cass's counterpart or if you no nope. your boyfriend nope okay <laughs> me okay. we are total opposite um, okay but we we come together in the best of ways but yeah no that's why i was thinking like no who is the most opposite of cassandra because i was thinking yeah. tugger because he does have that like rough and outer shell but he's like sweet on the inside but i think i think skimble is is the most accurate of I how I would describe him. <laughs> I love it. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back for more of The Wrong Cat Died. Okay. Well, you also teased into Gatsby. So let's talk about Gatsby because I got to see it and it was so much fun. I had a blast. I loved your tap number, right? Mm. You had this amazing tap number. Um, and a couple songs really stood out. But I want to hear from you, like, being in the show, being on Broadway, this it wasn't your debut. I know you've been on Broadway before, um, but it's it's kind of a an entity that people know. Although I had a lady behind me that was very surprised at the ending, and I kind of turned around, being like, "You know, this book's been around for a long time, right? Like a hundred years." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but for the most part, you know, like there is already experience with the source material, and so what would you like tell someone who's coming to see your production for the first time of what to expect? 
I would say that you would definitely expect the largest and most live party. Um, the way our production is put together, it is, I I describe it as like big Broadway is back. Um, yeah. And I know a lot of people have been describing it that way as well. It is so lush. It is so extravagant. Um, it is it is definitely it will definitely pull out your heartstrings and you will get into love these characters and un- kind of understand the mindset of what our writers were going through to get us into these characters minds um but i i would describe it as just like big broadway yes but it is such a uh spectacular for all of the senses to where you can really just enjoy being in a whole other world. So like um, our choreographer, Dominique Kelly, did an incredible job of allowing us to b- b- bring our own individual to the show of for the ensemble. Um, but he wanted to make it feel like we were back in the 1920s with a modern day feel of mm-hmm. it as well. So you're going to have the chance to see this world of the 1920s, but then also kind of pull between is this in the 20s or is this happening today because of the way that it was put together and i think that was done beautifully both by our choreographer and our director mark bruni um the way that they were able to allow us to escape from reality but then still have an understanding like this still could be today yeah definitely yeah i definitely see that i i think like when i walked out i felt the costumes and just the whole like you felt immersed in the experience which mm-hmm. was great like to be able to be like oh i'm i'm almost at this party right um which i know was the 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 vibe that was that they were going for the i mean the singing and dancing were incredible like the performances are amazing um and it's like as somebody who i, I kind of went back in being like i didn't reread it it's been a long time since i like really saw the movie or read the book or anything but it kind of slowly came back to me as we went. And I kind of love that. I was like, oh yeah, you're bringing me through this journey, but with a few modern twists. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then it's just such a, uh, to your point, it's, it's a big theatery v- like version, um, that I had a blast. And then my friend who came with me had a really good time, like just loving it. And it honestly it made it twice as funny when the, I don't think spoiler shocking moment at the end <laughs> where the person was like distraught and could not believe it. i'm like I, I couldn't get over i'm like did you not read this book right growing up like how did how did you not know this was coming right and we've actually had a lot of different reactions to the ending um depending on the show and the audience um we went because i'm dance captain i am often slung out so that i can note the show and mm. show nice and tight um and so i'll be in the house with everybody as if i am uh, a spectator um and one woman had to like physically get up and leave from the ending wow. um and i was like you're almost there just yeah. just wait for the the rest of it um but no she had to like get up and leave sometimes we have audiences who are so uncomfortable that they laugh i have some uh there are some audiences that at the ending they are completely shook that they start to clap so it's like it's it's interesting to see the different responses depending on the audience and their energy um but but yeah no it's definitely big broadway (laughs) yeah it's gonna be cool as a performer to see that though because that means that you're all are doing like bringing the the material to life like it's it is meant to be that way and and it it is like you know it's been i've been around so um i yeah i had i had so much fun i i highly encourage everyone go see it it's it's uh, a good time i uh, some of the songs i loved you know that they're just like were stuck in my head for days after um and so it was yeah just a very fun and cool experience yeah I want to do my favorite thing to do with all these new shows is to try to cast the cats as the characters. So we're okay. going to put you on the spot here. I spent a lot of time thinking about this and I think I, I have them all, or at least a pretty good guess for all but one. Okay. And the one is Gatsby. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to go backwards. Okay. So yeah. Let's that's start literally the first one that I was thinking of. And I, I was know, like, it's, oh it's my goodness. the hardest one. It's the hardest one. There's really no clear parallel there, but so let's go backwards. I'm going to start with, um, and I'm going to probably butcher pronouncing the last name, but Meyer, how do you pronounce Wolf? Meyer Wolfsheim. Wolfsheim. Mm-hmm. Who do you think that is? 
Hmm. Oh, goodness. Okay. He is definitely... I should have thought of this beforehand. <laughs> um, He is... I know there's no, like... Oh, my God. Who, who is that character's name? Who fights... Um. Oh, my gosh. It's not Growl Tiger, because that's not there anymore. Or it wasn't in our production. Yeah. But it's... I had him as McCavity. That's his name. Oh my god! I literally was like, "Why?" I my wow. Okay, okay. it's early. <laughs> I did not have my coffee. Um, yes. Oh, McCavity for sure. Just because of how how sneaky and behind the scenes he is. Yeah. Mm hmm. And like making everything work, but then it's like, oh, he is pulling the strings on all of this. Yeah, he's the the mob boss. And yeah. that was I I felt um that one to me was actually the easiest one. I was like this one <laughs> is the clearest one. Yeah. Um let's do George and Merle Wilson. So let's do those two now. Okay. George and Myrtle Wilson. I think that George he's not old dude. I can't say that. Um I thought George was harder than Myrtle. I, Myrtle, to me, came right away. I kind of want, just because, just because of the story, Myrtle is kind of like a Grizabella to me. Yeah, that's exactly what I wrote. Immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are hard. Okay. Um, no, definitely Grizabella for Myrtle. Yeah, she kind of like runs off does some stuff that's questionable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's trying to come back like that one felt really clear i thought george was a lot harder i i'm not even positive i like the one i have um but i had skimble i just felt there was a little bit mm -hmm. of like he tries to kind of keep stuff in order He was like pretty pretty organized with what he's doing with his job and work but he is kind of doing stuff behind the scenes so i was like maybe it's um a mongo jerry because he's kind of looking the other way that's kind of what I was thinking of more of a Mungo because he's not all there. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, and Mungo, is. yeah, Skimble is very on top of it and like everything is so pristine. That's why I was like, I don't know, but Mungo Jerry has like a childlike energy. Yeah. Which is what, what George doesn't have. However, I think because of how just like aloof he is i think george could definitely be mungo yeah this I, I, this is uh always hard because they don't it's not it's yeah not like, oh they wrote cats into these shows um but it's always fun for me to, to think about because there's so many personalities in cats yes that it's there so let's do i think this one was an easier one for me um tom oh monkey strap oh okay i mm -hmm. think that would fit i had buster for jones um Kind of yeah. oh. same, same idea, I think, is there, but just rich, posh, living yeah. life. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love that. The reason I said monkey strap is because he takes charge yeah. and like is leading in a way the his family, yeah. but he's definitely no, not as right. loyal as monkey strap. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> um, what about Jordan? Okay, Jordan is Bomb Valley Arena. Yep, that's she what I had. She has to be. That one she was has clear. To be. Yes. And then what about Nick? Nick? Oh, he also could be a monk, but... I think I tied him too much to Jordan because I put him as Tugger because of that. Um, okay. Okay. I see, I see that connection. I just think Nick has such a more of a mellow energy than Tugger. Yeah, I think that's true. But I think Tugger, yeah, because of the connection with Jordan, which is what our writers created, which I think is brilliant. It's so um, fun. It's such a fun storyline to, to put those, the two. And I mean, they're both so good. They're amazing yeah. performances. Um, okay, I, this one, I think this one, I, I, I think Daisy's, I think I have Daisy, but for probably a little different reason. And then I have okay. no idea for Gatsby. Okay. For Jay. But Daisy, I have an idea for. Okay. Daisy is Victoria. Oh, okay. Because I can see that. Yeah. 
Daisy is Victoria for sure. I went with Demeter because I think she's been put through a lot of stuff and has to deal yeah. with a lot of stuff. And then her yeah. best friend is Jordan, which is Bomb Arena. Bomb. Yeah, so that, that was the reason I kind of went better. There. Yeah, I think I think I chose Victoria just because of the way that Eva plays um, Daisy. She brings this like innocence mm -hmm. with a little bit of a kick, with a little bit of spice. And I think Victoria has that innocence, but she's also the one that has that spice because she went up to Grizz at the end to be like, no, everything's okay. And she's still like, you know, learning and figuring it out. And she's also yeah. trying to figure out this life with, with Tom, but it's also because of Gatsby. Mm, that's good. But Demeter is also a great choice. Yeah. Those both really fit. All right, the hardest one. I, I don't. I still don't feel good about my answer for for Gatsby. Do you have Mistopheles? That's what I. That's what I put. But I don't yeah. know. It's just because of the same like colorful lighting and like you know just like big and showmanship type of way. But it's nothing else about that personality matches. No. No, but I think Mistopheles is the only other one that I could really that would fit the the grandness of what Gatsby brings. My and other Mistopheles idea, brings that. Yeah. My other idea was a young Gus. Like, Gus in his prime. But oh, even that, I don't know enough yeah. about to be like, he. Gatsby seems to want to be more behind the scenes and <laughs> Gus wants to be as, as front and center as you can get. So this one was, it was tough. Yeah. Yeah. I think Mistopheles, though, for that one. Okay. Is there anybody else I missed? That you're like, oh, this is this cat. Like, is Cass in the show anywhere? Um, no. However, we do have Gilda Gray, mm -hmm. who sings that big number yeah, of yeah. Act Two. And in a she's way... Gotta be, she's got to be Jenny, right? Yeah, I was just about to say. she Because I was, like, going through them all in my head. I was like, Jenny has, like, a a, a motherly feel yeah to her and i think gilda has a motherly way of her voice and how she sings it mm -hmm. and just like what she brought and like because of her songs like he kept going through the war which seems very comforting so yeah jenny any dots is gilda gray the i, I hope i'm not spoiling for if, if you don't know gatsby at this point <laughs> um, I have questions, but you do have now two shows where it pretty much ends with with a main character being being murdered uh, mm -hmm. at the end. So, mm -hmm. are you are you attempting to cover all of those shows in your career, or is this just a you know a, a, a unlucky parallel? Unlucky parallel. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I want to do rapid fire now because I want to go back to oh, cats. So that was, that was super fun. And yeah, I mean, I'll link how to get tickets. Everyone needs to go see um, Gatsby. It was so fun. It, like you said, it, it is big theater. It's immersive. It is extremely well done. You'll have a blast there. So we'll link it. So everyone should go. Um, it's playing at the Broadway theater, right? Yes. Amazing. Okay. Some quick rapid fire. If you could perform one night as any cat, whether you're capable, male, female, who would you want to go on as? Mistopheles, 100%. Oh, well, it's a tie. Mistopheles or Victoria? Uh, great. Yeah. Two, I mean, two incredible numbers. Um, who are your favorite and least favorite cats? Oh, well, my favorite is Gus. Um, my least favorite is Tugger. Okay. Uh, favorite song in the show? Favorite song in the show? Um, we, we don't really sing it, but it's the Jellicle Ball. Yeah. Favorite song in Gatsby. Favorite song in Gatsby. Um, that would have to be New Money. Yeah, that was mine. I loved New Money. I, that yeah. that was the one stuck in my head for days after. Yeah. Um, which hat do you think would throw the best Gatsby style party? Bomb Valley Arena. That was, that was where I was thinking too. I think <laughs> Bus for Jones is funding. And, yes. bombs, and bombs planning and Correct. skimbles running all the stuff behind the scenes to make sure it goes on time. Correct. And Mistopheles is performing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay. Most important question. So I've argued at length 
I don't think Grizabelle is the right Jellicle choice. Okay. So who do you want to choose as your Jellicle choice and why? Hmm. I think my Jellicle choice would be Jenny Any Dots. And I've had this thought since I started um, the tour just because of the way that she gave back, the way that she was that mother figure to everybody, the way that she um, nurtured and was just a sweet, sweet soul. Um, I believe that Jenny Annie Dots should have gone to the heavy side layer. I love it. It's not Grisabella. So I'm going to ask a couple of follow-up questions. I don't want to, anytime someone says anything that's not Grizz, I'm like, great, we're done. Um, but I, so what is the criteria that you think goes that Jenny's picked? Is it the who deserves it from what they do for the tribe? Like, what does that feel like? I, I definitely think it's who has given the most energy and effort to the tribe to keeping um, everybody together, keeping the morale high. Um, she was also the cat. Like if there was anything that was going wrong. You go to her, all the little kittens went to her, looked up to her. Um, and so I think that's the criteria and not somebody who's necessarily been through it all, left everyone yeah. high and dry and then comes back and be like, I should be the one. No, sorry. Even though she sounds beautiful and can sing out Louise, but it's like, it. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's a different criteria. It comes from a little bit deeper from your heart and your soul yeah. versus yeah. just like your circumstances. No, I, I agree. I agree completely. And did your cast ever talk about this or think about no. it? No. Never? No, we we sometimes talked about it and like, just like joking, like, oh, we're just going to switch up the cats tonight. The like yeah. goes up the ladder. Um, But we never really talked about it at length. No. Okay. Who would be your Gatsby Jellicle choice? My Gatsby Jellicle choice. I would then say, I think Nick. Yeah. I think that's a, yeah. good, I think that's a good choice. Kind of does a lot of the work. Yeah. And he's he's finding it. He's looking. He's seeing all of all that's happening. Um, but our, our writer did a great job of having him have a realization of like, why aren't you staying with Tom or why aren't you leaving Tom? And then like having, seeing that realization of like, this is my life and this is the struggle that I have to go through, but I also have to live with this difficult decision. Um, and how he has to contemplate that and how he has to work through these two very different ideas of these characters. Yeah. Um, and I think that says a lot for him and his character and what <laughs> he, uh, has to then move forward with so yeah i love it um this has been so fun how can people stay in touch with you on social media and everything you're doing and then we'll link obviously all the stuff for the for the gatsby for people to go get tickets yeah so i'm on instagram and tiktok at mariah reeve um and i usually give an update uh every day of how you know my life and what i'm doing and um, different things like that. And uh, yeah, you can also come see it at the Broadway theater. Yeah. I, please do. If you're in New York, go see it. It's so fun. Uh, you'll have new money stuck in your head too. Uh, and yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great time. Maybe read the book before you go, or at least kind of like read the Wikipedia. So you're not surprised, uh, would yeah. be my, my advice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun night at the theater. Yes, and depending on when you are listening to this episode, uh, we just had three of our singles of our songs drop at midnight. Ooh. So you can listen to some of the songs. Our album doesn't come out until later on in June, but we did drop a couple of singles. So go take a listen on any streaming site, Apple or Spotify. Okay, so this is coming out in early June, so... There's at least three singles out and then the album coming out shortly after uh, yes. you, get, you listen, depending on when you listen to this, these will live on for a lot longer. So hopefully you can just listen to the whole thing soon. Yes. Amazing. Well, this has been so much fun. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing about your experience in both shows uh, and, and, and reliving your cat's memory a little bit. Yes. Thank you so much. I had a great time. Awesome. Well, thank you. And thanks everyone else for listening to this episode of The Wrong Cat Died, the podcast breakdown of the catastrophe. 
To follow along, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any else that's a podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and if you still use threads at TheRongCatDied, or check out our website, TheRongCatDied.com.